requires any kind of board of education considers the rehire of a superintendent following their retirement under the state teachers' retirement system. Before we begin this public meeting, I would like to offer an introduction. Sadly, in the run up to this meeting, people of this community and outside this community have seized upon this issue for political and or personal reasons. As board president and also as a member of this community for 29 plus years, I have been stunned and appalled by some of the blatantly false, misleading, and racially based bias to propaganda being used against our schools. It has insulted our community, our students, our parents, and our superintendent. Regardless of where you fall on the question of retire, rehire as a practice, there's no reason and no excuse for the ugliness and the false accusations we have seen leading to this public meeting. At the present time, dozens of school districts in Northeast Ohio have chosen to maintain the employment of highly experienced and valuable public school superintendents through this option. Finding leaders who can navigate the unique challenges of operating a school today is already a difficult task. But in our case, we have someone who appreciates the unique challenges facing our community, who has earned the respect of her teachers and support staff, and who does not allow, allow the negativity and bias that permeates the unfair media coverage of our district to dictate her vision for our children's education. In our current superintendent, we have a person who is literally dedicated, who has literally dedicated her entire career to this community as a teacher, a principal, an assistant superintendent, and superintendent. She remains fully invested in seeing our district continue to make the great strides her leadership has lost. Superintendent Corley successfully ushered this district through multiple capital, capital construction projects that have resulted in the vast improvements and reconstruction of our facilities, including the one that you are sitting in this very evening. Her leadership brought this district successfully out of fiscal emergency by making hard choices and difficult calls, cuts year after year that spared, to the best of her ability, the core of our educational program. Her vision for positive working relations with the teachers and support staff, which is shared by the union leadership, has fostered labor union peace and positive collaboration through successful implementation of the interest based bargaining negotiation model. Her educational vision has resulted in exciting partnerships with area businesses and industries as well as our local library. She has also overseen the implementation of, implementation of innovative and groundbreaking programs like ProWAS Scholar with Case Western Reserve University, STEM Labs, the Southern Cultural Arts Program, New Career and Technology Programs, including construction technology and performing arts, the 3D Star Program, Chinese Language Program, Dancing Classrooms, Peer-to-Peer Tutoring, -peer and Student Mediation and School Court Programs. The Superintendent's Wellness Programs for our students include free dental exams, vision screenings, and eyeglass programs, and DMI screenings have been a model to other Calhoun County school superintendents interested in these programs. Our children's graduation rate is 76 percent. Steady progress in this rate has been a direct result of the superintendent's leadership and our teachers' efforts, and is the highest it has been since before 1987. The high school has shown such significant improvement that it has been recognized by the Department of Ohio Department of Education. Consider just a few small handful of facts about our students. Our 2015 Martin Trout team placed in the Sweet 16 among 329 competing teams from across the state. The high school player 
landed 2015 Mardi Gras in New Orleans this year. They turned into the first high school in New Orleans. Our high school graduates completed over 4,000 years of service to our community, including providing masks to families for Thanksgiving and Christmas, service to local nursing homes, and service to the Cleveland Food Bank. The class of 2015 has been awarded over $2.1 million in scholarships. 52% of the graduating class will attend four-year colleges and universities. 25% will attend two-year colleges. 5% will join our United States Air Armed Services. And 1.5% will join the workforce. with two schools receiving AIDS. Keep in mind that this is an open enrollment school district, and children come from all around to the East Cleveland School District because of the programs that we have. Everyone who has joined us here tonight is welcome to speak during the time we have available. But if you are here and hearing of these student accomplishments, educational programs, and health and wellness programs for the first time, please take a moment to ask yourself if you are truly knowledgeable enough about our school district, our community, and our students to cast this version that a person who has dedicated her entire career yeah. to this community and has done <laughs> that has been made under the auspices of Mrs. Corley, superintendent of the East Cleveland Public Schools. What has happened here is not, not anything different than throughout the state of Ohio and other uh, school districts. To bring it home where as you will understand that I'm not speaking off the top of my head, I'm speaking from experience and publications of other school districts, one being our school board of education, and the, the, uh, well, the maneuver they call it, at double dipping at that time is Mrs. Holly uh, in the uh, Orange School District. There's another young lady by the name of uh, her, uh, her uh, superintendent, 
set to retire, the district may rehire, or what have you. There are other schools throughout the, this state of Ohio and outside of the state of Ohio are doing this. Why would you get rid of a experienced person that has articulated, uh, I guess, through this, the school system as far as, as a teacher, assistant superintendent, and now superintendent. So bring experience. So she knows, she's cognizant of what happened in, this, in the classroom. She's cognizant as, now as a superintendent as to how a, a school is to operate and to, uh, and she equally cognizant of the teachers that teaches in those classrooms and what they face daily as well. A lot of this stuff, and now some of you are going to get up here and castigate the superintendent. The superintendent is not in the classroom, number one. Right. <laughs> number two, the teachers are in the classroom. The teachers can't do it all by themselves. Okay, I just finished this sentence. It is incumbent upon the parent to start, education starts in the home, and it is enforced in the school system. I'm not speaking off the top of my head, I'm speaking for 17 years of experience in the classroom. My name is Vernon Roberts, I'm an East Cleveland resident, and I commend you, Judge McKinnon, on the information you gave, but I'm sad to say your information is incorrect. The Ohio Department of Education states that overall, East Cleveland School District is failing. It has an F. You can't hear me? Okay. I'm sad to say that your education has an F. The gifted honors program is rated an F. You stated that the graduation rate, 72.4% of students graduating in four years is rated an F. 71.1% of the students graduating in five years is an F. So the direct fault is your superintendent. If she was the dean of a college and she's been here 11 years and they're failing, do they, you think they keep her? If he was head of a corporation and it was in the red, do you think they keep them? I understand the accolades of what you said the students have done, but overall you got an F. Your gifted program, the honors program, it's an F. So whose fault is that? No, it's not the parents. It's the teachers and it's the board. I urge the board members to take a look at things that have happened. Since 2012, seven faculty members walked out of East Cleveland. Four of them were principals. Am I correct? Yes, it is correct. What did the board do, what did the board do to investigate that? Before rehiring, did you all poll your faculty and staff to see if you all have the support of them? Call us now. But this is only a select few here. This is not all East Cleveland. Look at the facts. Pull up the ODE. Then you'll get the facts. I can tell you what the marvelous million dollar band has done. You live in East Cleveland, the people that live here, I believe it's $450 to be in a bank. Look at the state of East Cleveland. You have a superintendent that can wave back. Oh, yes, you can. Don't say what. You know it. But what y'all fail to realize is that you're supporting, which they fail to realize, that you're supporting a failing system. ODE states it's an F. 30 seconds. You have a judge by the name of Will Dawson. He has a program called Cycle Breakers. I urge you all to break the cycle. Good afternoon, good evening, can you hear me? President Kennan, uh, uh, Keenan, and two board members, Superintendent Carley. Come here half on the, as a resident of the Hanna David Honor, 157, 16 Oak Hill, 47 years, former school board member, former teacher, and 
I'm saying it today in terms of what I've seen in Superintendent Corley, a word you cannot blame her for all of the deficiencies in East Cleveland. We have the most transient time of student that I've seen since I've been in East Cleveland. I urge the board members to listen to whatever is being said, but your elected officials do what is best for the city of East Cleveland. And I would urge that you consider all of the facts relative to what she has done in terms of the job and what she can continue to do and make that best decision. God bless you. Good evening uh, to the president and certainly to this uh, board and all of those that are gathered. My name is Reverend Lorenzo Norris, pastor of Concord Baptist Church in the city of East Cleveland. Uh, we have worked with this superintendent for 28 years in terms of mentoring, uh, violence for youth, and a number of educational programs to improve students and, and um, achievement. And I have found her to be faithful, a great leader, compassionate, and considerate. And I'm here just to say, I, I think uh, Judge Kingdom, you, you, you said it well. Yes. It would be a shame that we remove such one. And I'm recommending to the president of this school board and also those board members that you would let her retire and rehire because she is a proven leader.
because of Mrs. Corley and her leadership. There is never a meeting that I don't go to, that I don't learn. Her mission is for all of her teachers, her administrators, and her staff is to continue to grow and to learn, not to be idle. She, believe me, she makes us stand up and support our students. It's all about student achievement in Ms. Corley's eyes. Ms. Corley, I commend you. I leave you with this quote. It's not the load that weighs you down, it's the weight you carry it. And baby, you wear it with Good evening, uh, Madam President, distinguished members of the board, I'm Superintendent Spoiler, um, member of the community. My name is Anthony Lockhart. I am a 27 year employee of East Cleveland City Schools. I'm also a Shaw High graduate and alum alumni. I'm here to speak about the advocacy of Mrs. Corley for our students. Because at the end of the day, Judge King, it's about kids. And Mrs. Corley is one of the biggest advocates I've seen in my 27 years for children. She's all about the families in East Cleveland, she's about the children in East Cleveland, and she's about the staff and people work in East Cleveland. She puts every stakeholder in this district, she gives everyone a seat at the table. From the cleaner to the principal. Everyone is equal. That's the type of leadership we need. That's the type of leadership we should keep. So if it's on me and a vote, hands down is Mrs. Corley to, to be rehired. Good uh, to the board and community members, Ralph Spots, um, born and raised in East Cleveland, went to school, one way through Roselle and Shaw. That came back, um, substitute teacher for four years, and I joined the police department for 25 years. The last seven, I, I was chief of police. Last seven, I was chief of police. Uh, I worked quite a bit in this quarter. I think one of the people, a lot of people fail to realize, I used to say the three toughest positions in East Cleveland was mayor, chief of police, and the superintendent. Yes. Because for all black community, it's just still that is how we don't get the support yeah. in those positions from our own. Right. And we always got to deal with people trying to take us out. Wait a minute. Oh, this is what she did with me. Uh, I was total advocate for working with the youth. I started a power program. We had a power program, and we had several activities, but we had a problem at the recreation center. As you know, the recreation center is not up to the park. And we had to move 240 kids somewhere because we had a basketball program. We had nowhere to go. We went to Miss Corley, and she just automatically let us have superior and process. We got little kids running all over the building in the evening, but she worked with us and she made sure that those kids had someone to play. We had a D.A.R.E. program. I was a D.A.R.E. officer for several years when she was the principal of Rosette. When I became chief, we had lost the D.A.R.E. program. I wanted to bring it back because it's very important to have a police officer in the school with the kids. We were able to do that during this program. We were also able to get two resource officers. That's a police officer in the schools. One was at the middle school there, the other one was at Shaw. Full time. A lot of cities have the money to pay for the officers to do that. Of course, we don't. So Ms. Corley made sure she paid that out of her budget. Because she understood the importance of having a police officer to deal with, not security more or less, but the relationship to deal with the kids at a younger age. We still have those uh, safety school resource officers. She's helped with everything. They just had a bike rodeo. The other day, we gave away 50 bikes a year in the rodeo, 50 bikes a year for Christmas gift that we gave to all East Cleveland students in the district. And all of that is because of the help and assistance that she's giving us. So my, my main thing here is to say that there's a lot of people that talk about, that want to put the blame on the wrong people. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Want to put the blame on the police department because it's crime in the city. You want to put the blame on, like on Mason, it's not the teachers all the time, it's definitely not the superintendent. It starts somewhere else, and we keep forgetting that. But she has done a marvelous job, and you never want to talk to other people or nothing. If you got somebody in that position right now, you really need to keep somebody that knows it and cares about it. Thank you.
By this I mean she explains things when issues arise. When something occurs at Shaw, I contact her and discuss the details. She asks me what we have done, then discusses anything that was overlooked or not considered. She always asks me if I follow the East Cleveland Board policy. She teaches us, her administrators, how to be the best we can be for the students of East Cleveland. Mrs. Cordy provides the students of Shaw everything they need to be successful. We have tutoring for students needing additional help in courses after school and on Saturday. Mrs. Cordy is very approachable. I've heard several people talk about her open door policy, and she has that for her staff members also. We have her, her phone number. We call her at all hours of the night. We text her. Uh, and she always gets right back to us. We can call her office and come in if we need to see her and discuss anything. She does not criticize me when I make mistakes, and I know that I have. She explains to me legal issues I have not considered, curricular goals, and personnel contract language. Mrs. Cordy is more a mentor than a boss, although when she does give a directive, it is followed. <laughs> Mrs. Corley has experience in East Cleveland. Although I have only been here two years, I am almost positive her entire career has been here in East Cleveland. She knows the community, the students, and the politics of statewide education. Everything she plans is for the students of East Cleveland. At a recent expulsion hearing, a parent shared that her son, this just happened, her son would be the first male in the family to graduate high school. This is 2015. I could not believe this. Mrs. Corley bought the young man clothes with her own money and kept close tabs on his academics the remainder of the year. She would call me regularly and ask me, how's he doing? What's going on? Tell him to call me. Um, she follows up with our students. Mrs. Corley's heart is East Cleveland. She's a valuable asset, not only to the district, but to the community. And just one more thing, uh, the ge gentleman before me uh, talked about cycle breakers. Mrs. Cordy brought Judge Dawson's program to Shaw High School, and also if the gentleman will look at urban education overall on ODE, all urban education is lower than the suburbs. So that, that statistic is not new. Thank you. Thank you. 
Good evening, board members. Good evening. My name is Mary Rice, and I'm here as an educator with 41 years of experience and an East Cleveland resident. Several things that I'd like to point out, and hopefully I don't duplicate anything that anyone else has said at this point. Firstly, uh, there are many concerns voiced about academic achievement. I'll be the first one to say that East Cleveland is better than several other school districts right around in our area and have been so for the past few years. That alone is the topic that directly to the superintendent. And I will say in 2004, I was with the Ohio Department of Education when Mrs. Corley first took over. The district was in financial emergency, uh, the state receivership, and I was sitting at a table, uh, let's see, how shall I delicately say this? I was the only one of my type at that table. And everyone said, oh, East Cleveland is going to go all the way down to nothing. This superintendent brought this school district out of state That was for value added. The overall of this, uh, this academic achievement from the Ohio Department of Education is not enough. Please re uh, review those statistics. Secondly, I, I want to say that as an educator with the number of years of experience that I have, I know what it takes to bring an academic achievement one percentage point up. It takes a great deal of finances and a great deal of programming for what you have done in the short amount of time that you have been here is to be commended. And my last point, let me share this with you. For those, there are a lot of, in the state of Ohio, if you look across, uh, across the state of Ohio, many superintendents, uh, districts have changed superintendents within the past two years. Even the better districts, even the better districts have fallen down academically simply with the shift in leadership. That's basically to be expected. I'm sure that they're going to come up very shortly, but at this point, that's what happens. Our city is in a flux with a lot of things going on. We don't need to change hands at this moment. We need to keep stability, we need to keep our district progressing, and I urge the Board of Education to please look at those facts and to examine them carefully and do what's good for the East Cleveland Public Schools. Keep Mrs. Corley. Thank you. are not always prepared to learn in comparison to children that are in the middle class or 
upper middle class or upper incomes, um, and children are at risk. So with poverty, poverty among researchers is considered to, to push students into an at-risk area for learning. And this means that they're going to have academic failure. They're going to have uh, problems because of some of the, all of the challenges that they're facing in their households. And in terms of dealing with SES issues, we have unemployment issues, we got abuse, neglect, substance abuse, we got poor health outcomes, infant mortality, of course, in East Cleveland is already high, we got high cancer rates, I could just go on. But what I can say in terms of this Corley, she's dedicated, and when I met with her on a couple occasions, she told me about the readiness of the young, the, the, the kindergartners. So we're going to be partnering to make sure our children, our kindergartners, are ready to get into you know, these classrooms learning. Um, our children should not know Lil Wayne's uh, all his lyrics. You know, they should know their colors, they should know their ABCs. Those are things that we the community need to focus our minds on. And whether you're politicians, preachers, we need to focus on getting that grade from F to something different. And we could do that if we stand together as a community, support our our, our superintendent and move forward. Thank you.